So here's a picture of a distributed version control repository. The local repository is on the left and the remote repository is on the right. Each of the circles in the graph represents a commit, a snapshot of the project files. And in the picture, our local repository is a bit behind. The rest of the team has pushed some changes that we haven't fetched yet. So when we pull from the remote repository, that's going to download the data of all those snapshots that aren't in our local repository yet. For text files such as source code, this works very well. Text files are small and the version control system can do some tricks to keep the size of the repository small too. For instance, it could just store the differences between versions of the files. But for large binary files, like pictures, sounds and video, it can be a problem. Binary files are often large and generally version control systems can't do much to keep the size down. If someone in our team pushes three versions of a large binary file, then when we pull from the repository, we're going to have to download all three versions of that large binary file. And if there are lots of us on the team adding and updating binary files, our repository can become too large to work with efficiently over the network. So instead, we want to keep our large binary files outside the main source code repository, but still be able to work with them easily in the project. This is where the automated build system is going to come to our rescue. Our code lives in the source code repository. But when we run a build, the build system automatically fetches libraries that our code depends on from the internet. The build system then already knows how to get binary artifacts that our code depends on and compile them with our code. So what we're going to do is put our binary files, our pictures, images and sounds into a resources library. We'll put that on an artifact repository where our build system can find it and we'll put a dependency in our project to say that our code depends on our resources library. Now when we build our code, the build system will automatically download our resource library from our artifact repository. But unlike the version control system, which would have fetched every version there's ever been of our resources, the build system only fetches the version we're using now. And that means that downloading the resources is much more manageable. If we want to, we can also set up our automated build so it will publish our compiled program to the artifact repository. The last change that projects often make to this picture is they have their own artifact repository also act as a proxy for the ones on the internet. The build always asks for libraries from the project's artifact repository and it only looks on the internet for it if it doesn't already have the artifact. So, in our project infrastructure, we have two kinds of repository. We have a version control repository, which is where our source code lives, and we have an artifact repository, which is where binary files live. That's where we'll put our image resources, and our build system can also publish our compiled code as binary libraries to it when we want to publish them.